Tile and stone are very durable materials that can and should last a lifetime. When tiles break, more often than not, it's due to issues with the substrate or the installation method. The way you trowel mortar for setting tile makes a big difference. Let's look at the way to trowel and what's an error. Porcelain tiles in particular can withstand extra heavy service conditions. It takes a lot of impact or point load to cause bond loss when installed correctly over a sound substrate. The mortar under this tile was installed using the correct trowel method. No error here. On the other hand, since tile is a hard and brittle finish or a veneer, unsupported space under the tiles actually creates weak spots. That same porcelain tile may be easily damaged by the same impact, heavy loads, and other causes. Spot bonding with mortar is not recommended to set tile. It may be easier to set tiles flat to each other during the installation, but it's only a matter of time before the slightest force causes a failure. Little mortar actually comes in contact with the tile. It was easy to spot the tile that was installed correctly. The first tile was installed using the NTCA recommended ANSI standard. The others were not. Unfortunately, many tiles are being installed incorrectly, especially very large tiles, and this can result in costly breakage. So why does this happen? It's because most flooring adhesives were applied in this manner and the swirling motion was passed on. This is a more natural movement, just a simple bend of the elbow. It also didn't make much difference for flooring or very small tiles. The results of trawling this way are very misleading. You get the job done more quickly, but you can't get proper mortar coverage. Air gets trapped with nowhere to go and leaves the tile unsupported. Swirling the mortar causes voids where the tile is not bonded to the substrate. These voids can result in cracked tile and bond failure under normal use, but especially under point load or impact. In addition to impact and heavy loading, Tiles set without proper mortar coverage are more likely to fail under many conditions. To name a few, substrate deflection, shrinkage or creep, thermal expansion in high temperatures, and freeze-thaw applications. A lack of perimeter or other movement joints affects well-bonded tile, so imagine when half or even less of a tile is adhered. According to the American National Standards Institute and the TCNA Handbook, Tile requires a minimum of 80% mortar coverage in interior applications, 95% for exteriors and wet environments. Natural stone tile requires at least 95% coverage in all areas. Notice what happens when clear glass is installed over swirled ridges. See how hard it is to achieve the coverage required? It's impossible when you spot bond. Even beating it with a mallet won't help. With today's installations of larger and larger tile, there are other factors to consider. During the manufacturing process of most large tiles, the center tends to dome or warp upward. This warpage requires more mortar to be used and air is even less likely to be removed when the mortar is swirled. Additional mortar applied correctly has to make up the difference. Flatter substrates are also required to successfully set large format tiles as they cover a much larger area. According to TCNA and ANSI guidelines, variations in floor flatness should not exceed one quarter of an inch in 10 feet. When working with large format tile, a tile with any side 15 inches or longer, there's even less tolerance. Variation is limited to an eighth of an inch in 10 feet and no more than a sixteenth of an inch in 24 inches. Surface inspection and preparation are required for correct mortar coverage. The key to successful coverage is playing it straight, combing the mortar in straight lines. This method is proven to be effective even with large tiles. Why? Trial ridges running in straight lines are much easier to collapse. They assist with air removal to maximize mortar coverage and ensure a strong bond to the tile and substrate. You can't see through tiles, but if you could, you'd see this technique gives the best support and protection to the tile. There are other steps to achieving good mortar coverage. The first is to key in a coat of mortar into the substrate with the flat side of the trowel. Then add more mortar to the substrate and comb the mortar in straight lines, all going in one direction. Combing the trowel ridges in straight lines provides better distribution of the mortar. With rectangular tile, trowel ridges should go across the short direction of the tile. This allows better air release when you bed the tile. Be careful not to leave any voids along chalk lines or between tiles. Trial size matters. 
One size doesn't fit all. Use a trial that will help you achieve continuous minimum 3 seconds of an inch coverage. Larger tiles most often require deeper trials. For large format tile, glass tile, natural stone, or any tile set on exterior surfaces, back buttering the tile is recommended. Use the flat side of the trowel to get an even coat of border and fill all the spaces in the surface. To finish, set the tile firmly and move it backward and forward across the trowel ridges about a quarter to a half an inch. Move the tile in only one direction perpendicular to the ridges without moving in the opposite direction or twisting the tile. When you first start setting and then periodically throughout the installation, remove a tile and check for coverage. Ridges should be collapsed and you don't want the tile or substrate to be missing mortar. As we've seen in these examples, it's clear that there's a right way and a wrong way to trial mortar. Don't be a victim of trial and error. Play it straight and always use the NTCA recommended tile setting method.